From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Friday, August 23rd, 2024. I'm Steve Prentice. Kremlin complains of DDoS attack, but digital experts are not so sure. Disruptions that occurred on Wednesday for some Russian users of WhatsApp, Telegram, Skype, Discord, Twitch, Wikipedia, Steam and even Pornhub are being blamed by the Russian internet regulator Roskomnadzor on a DDoS incident targeting Russian telecom operators. Local digital experts, however, disagree with this statement, arguing that it is impossible to organize a DDoS attack on all 2,000 Russian telecom operators simultaneously. Stanislav Shakirov, co-founder and technical director of the Russian digital rights organization Roskom Svoboda, suggests that the regulator, quote, likely tried to block Telegram, which inadvertently impacted other services, end quote. FAA proposes new cybersecurity rules for airplanes. The rules focus on security of the airplanes themselves, especially the engines, which have increasingly become connected to internal and external data networks, which could make them vulnerable to cyber threats. The proposal seeks to standardize what the FAA currently calls special conditions, which are temporary regulations issued on a case-by-case basis. The goal of the standardization is to help reduce the cost of certification. This change is being described as long overdue by cybersecurity expert Joseph Saunders and others. Atlassian releases patches for Bamboo, Confluence, Crowd and Jira. In its August 2024 security bulletin, the company highlights patches for the Bamboo data center and server, the Bouncy Castle Java dependency, Confluence Data Center and Server and the Apache Tomcat dependency of Jira Data Center and Server and Jira Service Management Data Center. A link to the bulletin with all the details is available in the show notes to this episode. Windows Recall to reappear. Microsoft is deploying an updated version of its Recall feature, which had been initially announced this spring and immediately derided by industry analysts as keylogger software or spyware. The idea behind Recall was to take snapshots of a user's desktop every few seconds as a tool for keeping track of things. It was removed from widespread Copilot Plus PC release on June 13th, but will now be deployed to testers in the coming weeks. Microsoft has not fully clarified how the new version will differ, but has said it will include what it calls just-in-time decryption and that Windows insiders would need a Copilot Plus PC. Thanks to today's episode sponsor, Nudge Security. Do you know who's using Gen AI tools in your organization? Find out today with Nudge Security. Their patented approach to SaaS discovery gives you a full inventory of all apps ever introduced by anyone in your organization in minutes, including Gen AI apps. And automated workflows help you scale security and governance without breaking a sweat. Start a free trial today at nudgesecurity.com slash genai. That is n-u-d-g-e security.com slash g-e-n-a-i. Google fixes another high-severity Chrome flaw. The fix is the ninth for zero days in Chrome since the start of this year, and this one has been confirmed as being under active exploitation in the wild. It is described as a type confusion bug in the V8 JavaScript and WebAssembly engine, which allows a remote attacker to exploit heap corruption via a crafted HTML page. This is according to a description of the bug in the NIST vulnerability database. Users of Chrome, as well as of Chromium-based browsers such as Microsoft Edge, Brave, Opera, and Vivaldi, are advised to apply the fixes as and when they become available. U.S. charges Karakurt Gang's cold case collector. An FBI investigation has determined that 33-year-old Denis Zolotaryovs was a member of the Karakurt ransomware and extortion group. He is a Latvian national who lived in Moscow until being arrested in December 2023 and extradited to the U.S. earlier this month. 
Zolotaryov's role was to, quote-unquote, negotiate so-called cold-case extortions for the Karakurt operation when communication after the attack had halted without a ransom being paid. He was tracked down through cryptocurrency tracing, communication analysis, and data obtained from search warrants executed on Rocket.chat, linking him to the extortion and money laundering activities. Unified Teams app connects personal and work accounts. A new Unified Teams application launched by Microsoft, quote, allows Windows and Mac users to switch between personal, work, and education accounts without installing multiple apps, and also helps users switch between accounts without signing out and signing in again, and allows them to join meetings without logging into an account, end quote. Microsoft Teams will be available as a single application, enabling users to seamlessly switch between multiple cloud environments, tenants, and account types across personal and work, the Windows Insider team said. Two years later, log for shell still being exploited. This is according to researchers at Datadog Security Labs, who said, quote, cyber criminals are still finding targets for log for shell exploits that evade detection and plant malware scripts on unpatched corporate systems, end quote. This is due to vulnerabilities that remain unpatched, even though fixes have been made available for some time. Security experts have warned that eradicating the problem will be a long, laborious process because of software dependencies and so-called transitive dependencies that make patching very difficult. Datadog, for example, has noted nation-state APT actors linked to China, Iran, North Korea and Turkey using obfuscated LDAP requests, that is an active directory protocol, to evade detection, leading to the execution of malicious scripts on compromised systems. As usual, we've got a busy Friday of live streams today. It starts at 1 p.m. with Super Cyber Friday, where the topic will be hacking the future of pen testing, an hour of critical thinking about how to continuously manage your threat exposure with the CISO of MGM Resorts International, Stephen Harrison, and Sprocket Security CEO, Casey Camilleri. Then at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, we have our Week in Review show. Bethany Delude, CISO of the Carlyle Group, will be our guest, providing her expert commentary on the news of the week. To join us for both, head on over to the events page at CISOseries.com. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.